and I've been uh, blocked out of uh, all the mainstream news media. I'm right. covered up if you uh, follow it uh, carefully. Now we have what uh, your reporter somewhere in there called a, uh, a limited hangout, which we're familiar with. Uh, Fox News is saying, oh, well, uh, China was just trying to uh, keep up with us in terms of uh, scientific and medical endeavor. That's total full oh, throttle. Oh, oh. This Wuhan BSL-4 was China's fourth Dietrich. It was their first fourth Dietrich. Everyone knows it. Right. This uh, is a, a biological warfare uh, uh, factory. It is there for research, development, testing, stockpile of the most dangerous biological warfare weapons you can possibly imagine to uh, uh, human beings. Uh, and, and that is what we are dealing with. It has, uh, 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 as I've said before, it has SARS, which is already a weaponized coronavirus. And that was done over in China, setting off the uh, 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 SARS pandemic there when it leaked from one of their BSL-3s. It has gain-of-function work that we know from the University of North Carolina. It has HIV in there. We know from that uh, uh, scientific article I discussed with you uh, with the Australia Health Board and Wuhan BSL-4, HIV was DNA genetically engineered into that. Uh, that was confirmed by the uh, Indian scientists. Oh, in terms of the um, human death here, it's, it's astounding where this could lead if it is not uh, properly handled. Uh, with all due respect to uh, David, uh, this is, at a minimum, star, SARS on, on, on steroids. And the um, lethality rate of SARS already documented is 15%. The establishment, the medical, economic, all the Davos crowd of global onus are jumping on this for all it's worth to push their own agenda. And so we have to, in my opinion, we have to separate that out from the danger. Uh, I did some basic research when the uh, first reports of a... Uh, strange pneumonia-like uh, disease uh, came out of China, I looked into it. And it, it, let me just say, I've been doing this work professionally since 1983 or four, when the Council for Responsible Genetics uh, invited me. From, they're basically Harvard-MIT people. Uh, my buddies there at Harvard in life sciences asked me to get involved and handle biological warfare work. So uh, whenever uh, uh, some strange exotic uh, disease breaks out somewhere uh, with no explanation, I immediately try to look into it. Well, and I was invited by the Council for Responsible Genetics to give a briefing on Capitol Hill in 1985 on the uh, uh, Reagan administration's uh, biological weapons program, including the use of DNA genetic engineering to manufacture biological weapons. And let me point out, it was exactly at that time under Reagan's neocons that Fauci was appointed to work for Reagan. Fauci was put in there right at the time I got involved to counteract what Fauci was doing at NIAID. And indeed, that whole purpose of NIAID, there was a New York Times article several years ago saying 95% of this, uh, I, I would say Nazi biological warfare work, comes out of NIAID and Fauci, who was put in there by the neocons to, to do this type well, of work. So but this is a case, what, what we law professors and lawyers call joint and several responsibility. I mean, they're, they're both responsible on both sides. There's no question about it. Uh, China wanted to have its, uh, its own Fort Detrick, and uh, our uh, uh, death scientists were more than happy to help them. Uh, these people, I, you know, Alex, I, I want to make it clear, I, I'm not using the word treason here because that has a definite meaning in the U.S. Constitution and federal criminal law. I was originally hired here to teach criminal law for several years. But these people are traitors. Harvard was a uh, sponsor of that Wuhan BSL-4. Your uh, uh, associate just had it on there, right? And in addition, then, uh, uh, this Harvard let the chair of their chemistry department to go over to Wuhan to set up his own laboratory in Wuhan. Well, this chair of the... And the, the notion that Harvard didn't know, that's just a cover story. Of course Harvard knows. I spent seven years at Harvard. I have three degrees from Harvard. Exactly. Harvard covered it up, and, and they were paying. You know, this is outright greed. You know, it's the uh, statement that, uh, you know, capitalists will uh, sell them. He is a specialist in nanotechnology, and it was already reported that over in Wuhan, he was applying nanotechnology to chemical matters and biological matters. So I suspect that what happened here was that he applied nanotechnology to what later became COVID. That is why that MIT scientist determined that it could travel 27 feet in the air. That's why it's so uh, uh, infectious. It's, it's so small. It's nanotechnology as well as everything else together. It's being covered up, sure.
Uh, there's no question all about it. Just like the uh, anthrax attacks uh, coming out of Fort Detrick were covered up by the FBI. Well, I think, the first of all, I don't even know if, if this has been explained to President Trump because everyone he has around him are liars and they're up to their eyeballs in this Nazi biological warfare work. Someone needs to sit down like I did with you and go through in, in detail with President Trump about how dangerous this is. Once okay. he understands that the American people in our republic are facing this existential threat, <clears throat> he has to have a major address and tell the American people exactly what went on here, including the involvement of all these U.S. Nazi uh, death scientists, yes. which, by the way, happened yes. long before him. Yeah. I'm not blaming yeah. President Trump for this. I, I don't even think he knew what was going on between you and me. And then to understand that we are in the fight of our lives here, and we are going to have to uh, uh, operate accordingly in order to stop and, and cont contain COVID and try to throw it back. Uh, I think, and, and to think along those lines. This is far more dangerous to us and the uh, uh, American Republic than uh, Hitler and the Nazis or the uh, uh, Japanese imperialists uh, or whatever. They never got over here. COVID is here now. It can kill, I think, up to 15% of us if it is not handled uh, properly. And that, that's where well, we are. Right Trump now. has to come out and be honest with the American people and say, no one told me this is a biological warfare weapon. I, I don't think he was told this and how existentially dangerous it is. He's now leveling with the American people. Yes, we have our own uh, American Nazi biowarfare death scientists working with uh, China on this. And, uh, you know, these people are a fifth column. This is, this is a matter of telling the truth to the American people and level with us and then come up with uh, an agenda by uh, legitimate public health authorities, medical doctors, ep epidemiologists who have never taken one because they're all busy covering up their own criminal responsibility under my biological uh, uh, weapons anti-terrorism act that has life imprisonment said it's domination and control, population uh, reduction, the Nazi philosophy of useless eaters that was condemned in the uh, Nuremberg judgment of uh, 1946. I mean, we know Gates is a eugenicist and a genocider. That's, that's a matter of public record. And yet he's out there constantly being uh, uh, appearing on uh, MSNBC and CNN. Uh, uh, you know, what, what can I say? They, they're giving him uh, this uh, uh, immunity passports. It's completely uh, preposterous. So many of these vaccines are more dangerous than worthless. This uh, HPV vaccine that they're, you know, trying to pump into all our children, even Judicial Watch has exposed that. And, you know, they're a very conservative uh, legal organization. The list of these things uh, go on. And as I told you before, you know, Gates uh, uh, trying to uh, purvey a uh, vaccine here. I don't believe there is a vaccine, Alex. Uh, I just I just don't see it. I'm sure he, he understands that, too. So that could be more dangerous than worthless. And in any event, he'll have a patent on it and, and scaremonger everyone to uh, take the vaccine one way or the other, and then you get a passport. Well, it's uh, Dr. Tony Mengele Fauci. That's what we're dealing with here. That's and right. and uh, Perks right. is not much better. So, uh, you know, how, how can the president properly formulate a policy to deal with an existential threat, which I believe is there, to the American people and the American Republic. Alex, as you said, it could all collapse if, if this is not properly handled uh, with people like that, that that are basically criminals that clearly violated my Biological Weapons Anti-Terrorism Act all up and down. That's why I got that act uh, uh, into law, uh, passed unanimously by both houses of Congress, signed by President George Bush Sr. to stop these Nazi biological warfare death scientists like Fauci and Collins and Burks and, and, and this whole cast of characters. Right. I went right after that. I have a book here, Agents of Bioterrorism by a professor of biology at uh, Columbia, published in 2003, before all this happened. And it says, quote, the overall death rate of SARS patients is 14 to 15 percent, unquote. And right now, as I've explained, we are dealing with a super turbocharged SARS. So I think that is a minimum of the lethality that we are dealing with. Well, I'm saying that we, we have to understand how existentially dangerous this is, and then we tailor our policies from Just there. It's like World War II, you know, that's what we're in now. It's, it's, it's World War III. Uh, yes, we'll have to accept some restrictions on our civil rights and civil liberties uh, while the emergency is there, but we don't want to give them a way to these uh, Davos Globalonius